Today we are destroying Naturalis. More specifically, we are destroying the Red Panda and the Small Clawed Asian Other Habitat because we're replacing them with Grizzly Bears. Let the chaos begin. Alright, so I'm probably going to make some people angry with this by saying this was a very easy habitat for me to build. I know that there's going to be some people thinking like, what the fuck, boys? And this is not simple. This is not easy. But for me, it is is because i'm using like a lot of tricks that i've kind of built up over my time playing planet zoo such as the mud columns also figuring out how to perfectly align circular buildings or circular builds which is why you see all of those red columns it's just like me aligning things with the pot very easily also yes every circle that i've built is now like grab or snapped to like a certain angle or like angle snapped to like 15 degrees so it's a little bit more difficult for me to build oval shaped buildings but circular buildings i can do those very easily anyways i have seen lately that like a few people have started asking again why i'm using mud columns in every build i'm going to try and explain this Please tell me if your head explodes because I am not good at explaining things. So this might just end up melting your brain. But the reason why I'm using the mud columns is because they have one snapping point. If you don't know what a snapping point is, it's basically points on a item where another item would snap to if you have the snapping thing on, which is in the build menu, so not in the regular menu. Ooh, but in the build menu next to the catalog you have like snap to thing and snap rotation i usually when i'm building have both of those on and the mud column has one snapping point where if you place a piece it will then automatically snap to and that snapping point for the mud column is completely in the middle of the column but because the column is also a grid piece it's also in the center of a grid where which if you don't understand uh, what i mean with the center of the grid if you build anything in planet zoo you will get the, like the yellow grid with like the lines and the squares and such for me it's very handy because a lot of my buildings if you look at them from above are just squares and rectangles with like things sticking out of them and such or complete circles so having a snapping point that's on the center of the grid is just very useful for aligning things it's also how i built like the sort of trick of having all those yellow or red columns or beams so that i can align things to the parts very easily because it's basically the same basic shape as like a circle so i use the mud column as like the center of anything that i built or at least anything that's circular that i want to build or anything that i easily want to like duplicate and such because then you can just easily duplicate it along the grid lines and with circles it's just like yeah, if you use the mud column as the center of your circle you just drag whatever piece you want out from the snapping point on the column which makes the like width of your circle so for this habitat for example i just snap all of the circular things that i wanted to have snapped it to the middle of that mud column in the beginning and then like built up a fence and such and then just drag that fence outwards from the column to determine how big the circle was going to get i also use this with not only just circular things but also domes and such because the mud column is just a very handy thing to use if you want to align things perfectly and yes if i ever see someone aks then built without a grid i get anxious because i'm this is just my way of building so whenever i, I see someone else not using it it's just like no that's no no yeah I mean, everybody builds their own way. It's just I've gone so used to building this way that whenever I see someone else building, it's just like, eh, this could have been made so much easier if you just used that and that. And it's, I never vocalized this, of course. It's kind of just like also fun at the end of the day in a way. Like seeing people build in a different way and then realizing, yeah, it works. 
Also, I'm in pain, but I weirdly like being in pain. I am, I swear I'm not into BDSM or like a masochist or something, but it's just fun in a way to see like different ways of building, even though my brain at the same time is going, no. Anyways, back to the actual grizzly habitat. So yes, the red panda habitat is gone. The small clawed Asian other habitat is also gone. The entire reason for it is, A, I just thought that those habitats could do better. They all moved to different areas. Like, of course, the red panda is going to go to the Asian highlands. Then the small clawed Asian otter might go to like the Southeast Asian section that I've planned out. But then I had just this space left over. Also, the reason why I wanted to get rid of them, not only because of the habitats like I could do better, but also because it felt weirdly closed off, especially the red panda habitat felt like this island in the rest of Naturalis. So I was immediately just like, that structure, like the sleeping structure of the red pandas just had to go because it just enclosed everything. So I wanted something that just felt more open but also gave a little bit of a barrier to the Asian highlands because, of course, the giant panda that is right behind this. So I wanted to kind of shield that off, but also make it so that the entire space in front of the habitat just felt cohesive, felt like everything kind of belonged together and not like it were all these separate islands. Like, that's the main issue that I have with, like, the first few habitats of naturalis it they kind of feel like separate islands the amur leopard habitat like the leaf shaped dome is the least offensive one of that maybe also like the giant penguin no it's not the giant penguin it, i think it's the african penguin which is a weird habitat because it weirdly like it's the african penguin and it was built before I had like a concept of like the African area for naturalis mapped out. But it weirdly fits together with the African area. So I think that's the one and only habitat of like the original habitats that I'm like, that's good. It might not be the best build, but it just fits in really well with the rest. Especially weirdly with the rest of the African area, even though it's separated from the African area by the information center. It just works really well. And that's like a thing. Like some habitats aren't like the greatest on their own. But in like the network of all of the other habitats, they are just like a key link. Like I said this before with like the rhino habitat that like maybe on its own, like the habitat without like the structure and such is not the greatest. But it just works really well in the network. So it just makes everything come together. And that's what I tried to do with this grizzly habitat as well. Also, I didn't want to make an aviary. So this is basically how I'm now building, well, aviaries. I basically didn't want to put like mesh on top of this habitat, which you probably would want because grizzly bears can climb and you know, so you probably want to be certain that they can't get out of the habitat. So my solution to that is just, yeah, let's fry them. Like the sort of beam structure on top of the fences. There's probably like a low voltage electricity to just scare them if they ever try to get out. And then the one section where there is no high fence, there's a moat, there's just a sloping wall and such. So that the grizzly bears i wanted to say red pandas but like i mean i would be the person to like build this huge fence for red pandas but on that side there's just no fence or well there is a fence because of course you want to keep the people out of the habitat because there will inevitably be a dumbass who tries to get into the habitat there is a small like sort of electrical fence on that low section in the circle area facing the gift shop just again for safety of like making sure that the grizzly bears don't get out also i'm building this habitat for two grizzly bears probably the majority of the time there would be one in here because they are solitary animals so they will like try and fight each other probably 
so after like mating season is done this habitat will probably just have one grizzly bear maybe with like a, the mother and the cubs and such but probably not like the majority of the time there wouldn't be two grizzly bears in here but for the videos and just for the cinematics i did put two in here because it just it's nicer to have more animals in the habitat especially like with the rhino habitat that's the one thing that i was just like uh, like i wanted more animals in there <laughs> because that's the thing with like the giant habitats for me it's just like the elephant habitat was kind of fine because i could put like five elephants in there and they are huge so it works but like some animals have like really high like requ space requirements and this grizzly bear habitat it might look small it does still fill the requirements when it comes to space and such for the grizzly bears because that's kind of a challenge that i'm doing with myself like i've basically done two challenge or keep holding on to two challenges for me when it comes to naturalis keep the space requirement for the animals in the green and also make sure that everything of naturalis is accessible by wheelchair crutches or anyone with what is it impaired mobility those are just challenges that i like to keep just to make things fun because i could probably make like a really just like beautiful smaller habitat but i do also kind of want to keep challenging myself to like build to have that but still keep like the game in mind again this is not me saying like oh the people who don't care about the requirements are bad no that's just the way they play and this is the way that i keep myself entertained while building i don't know <laughs> this is just a tangent <laughs> while we're building the interior of the sleeping area which i just want to just a quick note on the interior for the sleeping area for the grizzly bears i for the longest time had like I had to figure out like how is the staff going to get in here because there's two sleeping areas because of course like if there's ever like a mating thing going on there needs to be two sleeping areas because you want to be able to separate the bears but then you also want individual access to both of the sleeping areas and this building is that small that was just like how am i going to figure this out and i also wanted it to be like a view area so that the guests could look into the interior and so then i realized i could do the same as i did with the rhinos where the walkway between the two sleeping areas is also just completely glass so that the guests can see in and staff can also see in to just know that they are not going to get mauled by the grizzly bear because uh, yeah you kind of want that when it comes to carnivorous animals especially large ones that could actually eat you aka grizzly bears and just majority of like the interesting carnivores in planet zoo you kind of want to well actually not even just carnivorous animals like just any animal that like would also want to escape like a red panda you want to have an area where the staff can like view into or look into the habitat or look into the sleeping area just so that when they open the door to get in they are not immediately swarmed by animals trying to escape because some animals are just crazy and want to escape like i've told this numerous times of like the red pandas in rotterdam zoo just constantly trying to escape <laughs> so like yeah you probably don't want a grizzly bear on the loose also you don't want the staff to get mauled because here at naturalis we don't give a shit about you as the guest like PD the red panda mascot will murder you if you are in the zoo after closing time and we don't give a shit about that because he's against littering so he keeps the park or the zoo clean as well so good on him but we do care about our staff sometimes yes they still have a very few staff facilities but we do care about them not being mauled to death by grizzly bears or caracals or snow leopards actually the snow leopards don't have that uh free well free food for the snow leopards <laughs> not really because you still have to pay anyways moving on to the tangent that i was going to be talking about also just side note there's an elevated section here for like a different kind of viewing area and of course after i figured out how to make somewhat believable 
rounded, what is it, wheelchair ramps. <laughs> and for some reason, I keep forgetting that word. But after I figured out how to do that, now I want them everywhere. Also, this is just like, after I figured out like, oh yeah, it looks great when you have like different heights when it comes to the pots. Now I'm also just doing that everywhere. God damn the African section for making me learn that. Of like, oh yeah, it's nice to have an elevated pot because it just gives like different heights and such and makes an interesting place. And now I'm just like, yeah, now I'm just going insane. Anyways. On a small different tangent, so while I was what or building this habitat, I was watching a lot of like theme park POVs of like, you know, I don't know, the Phantom Manor, Haunted Mansion and such, just watching POVs of those rides or like Pirates of the Car Caribbean rides, like mostly dark rides, not so much coasters because that's just a little bit too much energy while I'm building, but here's the thing where you really figure out I am really Dutch in a way, because just randomly in one of the POVs, I think it was like a Disneyland Paris or something, I was immediately just like completely just like in the zone of, of like that POV, and then I heard somebody talk, and I was immediately like, that sounds Dutch. Is that Dutch? Is that Dutch in a video of somewhere else than the Netherlands and I just replayed it back and back over and over and over again and then I was just like yes that's Dutch it might be like Flemish Dutch like it has a slight accent maybe maybe like I was really trying to pinpoint like what kind of Dutch did I hear and it wasn't like the people actually filming it was like guests behind them <laughs> and I was just like is that Dutch like, does anyone else do this when you're like watching just a random video and you suddenly hear your own language and you just zone in on that? <laughs> like you just completely forget what the video was about and but you just you heard your language and it's not by like the person filming or the person like the what is it the subject of the video It's just someone surrounding them and you just hear your language and it's just like is that my language? Where is it from? What specific region? And then it was just like, what the fuck am I doing? <laughs> but yeah, that was just a fun thing while building. Anyways, yeah, let me know down below in the comments if you ever do that when you just in a random video hear your language. Specifically, people with like a more like specific language. Like I get it. Like if you're like you're an English speaker, you're going to hear that everywhere. Or Spanish, like one of the, the like major international languages but if you have a more just like you know a language that isn't spoken by most of the world do you just like zone in on just like oh i heard my language here and it's not like a video specific for my country or my like region or anything let me know if you do that anyways also just a side note again like this is a tangent upon a tangent but Here's the thing with how I'm building, I never can have complete silence. I will go insane. Like I need to have like a video on in the background or a stream or just something. Like lately music worked a bit for me for a while and now it's just like no, I need somebody talking in the background. Like I need words. However, I don't want people actually in the room with me, I just want they have the feeling that there are people, but they're not near me. Basically, I want people in a room separate from me talking just so that I can build. But doing that in the way of videos. Like, that's a weird way of saying it. But, like, I need the presence of people, but not near me. Is that, that, is that a weird thing? It just, it helps me concentrate. And also, sometimes I'm just mindlessly building. Like, especially with foliage and such, I'm just, like, mindlessly placing grass or something. And I just need something that like keeps my brain sort of active on one thing while my hands and such are basically doing something automatic such as with the grass placing because for this habitat I placed so much grass because the in-game grass or at least like the paintable grass I do use it especially for like patches of grass where it's like I want something just like more voluminous. Then I use the in-game like the long grass. I almost never use the small like the just 
painted grass. I want the long grass, but it's always hidden within the patches of placeable grass. So, yeah, while I'm placing grass, I'm watching coaster, no, not coaster, but dark ride POVs. Or lately, I've been watching a lot of like ghost hunter stuff. I don't really like. I want to believe in ghosts, but I don't really like. I, also, the same with aliens. Also, if aliens were ever real, uh, we don't want that. <laughs> Probably don't want that on, because either they are really not advanced and they're like slugs. And then it's just like, yeah, do you think humanity would be a good thing <laughs> for that? Like, we are not kind to each other. Just imagine how we would be against aliens. And if they are not like, you know, as advanced, then either they are really more advanced, and then why are they not doing anything here? Or they're at the same level. But either way, like, aliens, probably not a good idea, because we uh, would get territorial. What was this weird tangent about? I don't know. We moved on from... What was it? Me needing music, or me needing videos in the background, and such, to aliens. How the fuck did that happen? Like, this is just the thing with me. Whenever I make one of these videos, if any one of you guys like points out like, hey, what what was that about in the video? I'm just like, I have no idea. My brain just does like a clean swipe after every commentary. And then I'm just like, oh yeah. Like, of course, major points that I make stick, but like some of the tangents, I have no idea what I'm talking about five minutes after I stopped recording, which is kind of fun because uh, it's basically me being drunk without being actually drunk. I still never had an hangover. Like I one time had like a headache after drinking a bit too much, but uh, never had a hangover. But then I also don't really drink. Like I drink on like New Year's or maybe on like a birthday, but that's it. I just don't find drinking interesting. It's just, yeah, it's going to burn my throat a little bit. Something else that tastes a lot better. Anyways, moving on to the actual build again, because we're going on way too many tangents. So when it came to the grizzly bear habitat and the foliage, oh boy, there's so much here. And it's just, uh, I needed to figure out because again, grizzly bears can climb trees. So I didn't want to put large trees in the habitat because I don't know, maybe we would get a grizzly bear that's just like escape happy. And uh, yeah, you don't want that. Like better if like a red panda escapes because like they can't harm anyone. They look like fucking teddy bears on steroids. Yes, I did just call a red panda and teddy bear on steroids. But that's just because they are. Like they, if they try to be threatening, they look just more adorable. Like that's just the thing with red pandas want to be ferocious they want to be angry but uh, they, it just doesn't work you just want to pet them anyways but grizzly bears you kind of don't want that because uh yeah, yeah they can bite your face off probably <laughs> so yeah just had to figure out like oh what trees like i could put larger trees in the middle of the habitat but not outside or on the fences or close to the fences but eventually i figured something out and also uh, yeah, as I probably should say, this build was completely made up because I needed to... Re or I had another build lined up, but I had to push that one back a bit because of special reasons. A certain leafy bush can talk about that. So I needed to have another build. Anyways, that's it for today's video. If you like that video and don't want to be mauled by a grizzly bear, hit that like button. And if you want to keep PD the murderous red panda mascot happy, hit that subscribe button because otherwise he will find you and will stalk you at night. And uh, we at Naturalis are not responsible for any dismemberment. Anyways, have a wonderful day guys. Bye bye.